Hi, this is Greg Moore from TAFE New South Wales, back again. Um, Week 2 DC Homework, Unit UEE NEEE 104A. In Part 1 of this um, homework video solution, um, we had a look at a pretty standard circuit, but in fact that circuit took into account the um, DC resistance of that uh, milliamp metre and we're asked to solve uh, the circuit including that resistance and without that resistance and then uh, what would be a preferred value you know knowing that there's no perfect meter with no resistance what would be a uh, um, a meter resistance that we could live with and we sort of said less than um, less than one ohm for that type of milliamp meter so on to uh, question two question two is quite different question two has to do with conductances and uh, instead of being given resistances in this circuit uh, we're given that the first one is 230 millisiemens and then the second one is 45 millisiemens and the third one is uh, 110 millisiemens so uh, the first question was of course calculate the value of each resistor in ohms well we know that conductance Um, the larger the value of conductance, the better the conductor is, so therefore the lower the the resistance is because it's a reciprocal of the resistance. So what I've done here on the solution page, um, I've taken the 230 millisiemens of the first resistance and I've taken the reciprocal to come out with 4.34 ohms. And I've taken the second conductance which was 45 millisiemens again I've taken the reciprocal to get 22.2 ohms and then I've taken the third one which was um, 110 millisiemens reciprocal of that 9.09 ohms Um, so you can see there like I said the larger the number of the uh, conductance even though we're in millisiemens 230 millisiemens is much bigger than 110 and and much much bigger again than 45 so the 230 millisiemens worked out to be the lowest resistance value Um, then that was the value of each resistor for part A so we only had to write those down now there was a fourth one uh, because the meter told me that it had 2000 millisiemens which is uh, a much larger number even than resistor 1 I did the same maths on that and I took the reciprocal of that and I got 0.5 ohms of uh, internal resistance on that meter so I've also written that down even though it didn't really ask me for it I included that as a resistance because I remembered what we'd done in part one of the homework question B what is the total resistance of all three external resistors it's only asking me for the external resistances I've added those up here you can see um, 35.53 ohms Um, I think I can probably put a bit of a circle around that there so that we know what we're talking about because we're going to be using that, I think, again later on in the uh, solutions. Um, C. Calculate the resistance value of the wire conductors. Oh, this is interesting. Um, oh, look, just before I do that, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I... I included, like I put an arrow next to R3 to show what those three external resistances were at 35.53, but then there was one below that, and I'll just put a line under that, 36.03, and of course what I've done, I've, I've added on the, um, the extra 0.5 ohms, and I guess I've done that at that point in the solutions, because knowing that, you know, possibly this examiner is going to ask me something about that later on. Um, so then next to the 35.53 I've written that in fact that that is just the external resistors there so um, part C the wire the wire was given to us at 45 Siemens per meter and we had 0.33 meter now do not fall for the mistake of going um, and I'll write it out here do not fall for the mistake of going 0.33 uh, times 45 Siemens you, you can't do that so I'm going to put a great big line through that and a big X at the end. Do not do that. Um, because you're working with a reciprocal and um, 
you know that 0.33 of a metre is one third of a metre. We don't have to take the reciprocal of that and uh, just call it three. So we've got to do three times 45 Siemens there, and then we can convert that back to a um, resistance. Or alternately, why not just, and that's what I've done here, I've, I've looked at the 45 Siemens, I've gone one on 45, which we'd already done up here as well, to get 22.2 milliohms, and then I'm talking ohms and a fraction times 0.33, giving me 7.33 milliohms. And I'm going to put a tick next to that because that is the correct way to do it. Um, D, part D, calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So this, this I guess, is going to be with the, um, with the wire uh, in, in the circuit over here. Um, part D, calculate the total resistance of the circuit, and that's going to be with the uh, wire included. So here's my wire here, and I'll even write wire next to that. Wire. So 35.53 for the three external resistors, ohms, 0.5 ohms for the meter, and uh, 7.3 milliohms, which is quite small, of course, for the wire, and that's what we'd expect to get. And uh, that adds up to uh, a total of 36.037 ohms. And you can see up here we had uh, 36.03, and then that's uh, plus the wire. So plus the wire. That was without the wire, and then the wire is that extra little 0.7 on the end. Um, question E, what should be the circuit? current then? Well that would be including all of that total resistance of the circuit. So that would be um, uh, I equals V on uh, V on R. So that would be 9 divided by 36.037 which gives me uh, 0.2497 amps. 249.7 milliamps. Question F. Does the current meter have any resistance? Of course, yes, and uh, there we've got a tick next to that, and I had solved that earlier on, as I said, that was 0.5 ohms, and I did guess that we were going to be asked something about that down the track. Question G, did you include the current meter um, internal resistance, R subscript int, in your resistance calculations? Well, again, I've written yes here, I have included that, so I guess if you've answered no for that, uh, you should be thinking about why you didn't do it, because it certainly has got some internal resistance, uh, just like we saw back in part one uh, of the uh, homework question. H, determine with maths, so do a calculation here, the proper current flow in the circuit without the meter connected in series. So we need to now get rid of that 0 0.5, and uh, here it is here, I'll just put a box around it, 36.037 ohms minus 0.5 giving us uh, 35.537 ohms. Divide that into our 9 volt supply and uh, then we're going to get and that will give us over here the uh, uh, current without the meter 253.2 milliamps and I put a nice big loop around that. So on to part I. Determine the proper voltage drop across each resistor without the current meter connected in series with the circuit. So we've just worked out the uh, circuit current without the meter. That's at 253.2 milliamps. So I have to, you can see here, VR1, VR2, VR3. I've had to use that new current and multiply each resistance by that. So the 4.34 ohms has 1.0 988, excuse the mess there across it. Um, the 22.1 ohms had, uh, when multiplied by that new current, had 5.595 volts. And the 9.09 ohm resistor multiplied by that new current had 2.301 volts. And I've got a set of curly braces around that and I've put next to it with no meter, just to remind me what I'm doing there. 
Part J, did you include the wire resistance in your calculations for G and H? That's a definite yes, because earlier on it asked us for that total resistance, and that includes the wire resistance, because we were specifically given that, um, you know, that the wires were 45 uh, Siemens per metre, and it told us how long the wire was. Part K, uh, including the wires in your calculations, what voltage will be lost in the circuit due to the conducting wires? Um, what a great thing to know. Luckily the wires aren't very long, but V drop wires, V sub drop wires, 253.2 milliamps then times the resistance of the wires, which is only 7.33 milliohms, to give us a tiny little voltage drop there, just 1.85 milliamps. Part L, including the meter... Uh, resistance, the wire resistance, show what the measured values of current and voltage will be in this circuit. Okay, let's just uh, scroll up here a little bit. We can see what we're doing. Um, the current total will be 9 volts divided by the 36.037 to give me 249.7 milliamps uh, on the meter. And then VR1 I run the maths on it using V equals I times R and I get 1.084. Pardon the uh, bit of a mess there where I've scribbled that in. VR2, 5.519 volts. VR3, 2.27 volts. And V meter, um, it looks like 1248 millivolts there, 1.24 volts. And V wire, 1.83 millivolts, not very much at all. Part M, if the wires were three meters long, so, you know, in the first part of the question, they are only like one third of a meter, but if the circuit changes and now the wires are three meters long, what extra voltage will be lost across the wires in the circuit? So I had the 22.2 milliohms per meter, and that was because we had 45 Siemens, and the reciprocal of that is 22.2 milliohms. Multiply it by 3, 66.6 milliohms. And, and then I can run the maths on that, and uh, it seems that we're going to have 16 millivolts of uh, voltage loss in all of that wire. But it said compared to the original circuit, well, in the original circuit, we had 1.85 milliamps. So I minus that from the 16 uh, milliamps, and I've, I've just rounded it up there, and I've said, so say, you know, approximately 14 millivolts of uh, extra voltage loss in the circuit. So um, there's, there's not a great deal of voltage loss in that circuit, uh, even with three meter long wires. So there was a fair bit of um, new things to think about in that part of the homework because although we'd done conductance in class, um, you know, it's not till you actually have to sit down and do something with conductance and be asked questions about what's it going to be when the conductance changes to this, etc., that you really have to, you know, get your brain around thinking in conductances and reciprocals of resistance and vice versa. Um, all right, I hope that helps, and that's part two concluded then of week two homework. Thank you very much.